We're going to start with the main story. It's been rolling for the last 24 hours uh, and bring on the best guest one could ever have with this. Peter Blexley, former Met Police detective. How are you, my friend? Very well, thank you. So we did this yesterday at quarter to five, mate, um, before anybody else. And I have to say, um, the initial reaction to that video was, whoa, that's pretty horrific looking. When you delve into it and the information comes out, what we know is three suspects were inside Manchester Airport's Terminal 2 a security risk naturally. They uh, they launched themselves at some earlier police officers. One female police officer had her nose broken in three places. They called the armed response unit. They felt that these guys lunged at them and actually were going to... So this guy did what he did. What I'd like from you, before we talk about, you know, all the people who are chanting Alu Akbar and all that rubbish overnight, what did you make of the video when you saw it? Well, the first bit I saw was that very judiciously clipped segment yeah. that only showed the officer kicking and stamping on the man. So that, of course, was particularly unsavoury. Um, and it was then, as I felt, my responsibility to search out other clips and find out more about the story, much of which you've just outlined. Yeah, yeah. However, there is still a lot more to be told about this story that hasn't been made public yet. The airport, of course, is covered by high-resolution blanket CCTV. So at some point in the future, we are going to get the very much A to Z of exactly what happened. So we'll get context, we'll get backstory, and then we might be better positioned to make judgments on what we've seen. Of course, it did look horrendous. It did. In the, in, you know, there's no getting away from that. And in many regards, the damage is already done. The court of public opinion has returned its verdict but I, well, this is what to an to extent. Well, to an extent, because I found it really fascinating. Richard Tice came on. A clip, by the way, that's been viewed over a million times and said, actually, I felt a degree of relief that the police were being proactive, whereas when it was the Leeds riots last week, they sat there and seemingly did absolutely nothing. However, you're right. It's right somebody's head being kicked and stamped upon. But I ask you this as an ex-police officer, this is my point. I mean, I can say as a man, if somebody broke my wife's nose in three places, I'd go for them. I'm being completely serious. Maybe I'll be told off for saying that. Um, and we're, we're always on at the police, but they are human beings. They and maybe are. seeing a colleague in such distress being attacked, maybe considering what they thought could have happened, because rest of bleeding short, if he'd done nothing and that bloke had pulled an explosive out and blown up Manchester Airport and taken people's lives, people would have been saying, why wasn't he taken out sooner? So I guess in that split second, we need to consider that, right? It's the complexities of policing. Yeah. And police officers face these type of decisions every day of the week. What you cannot afford to do is let the red mist come down. Do you think it did? And cloud your vision and cloud difficult, your decision though, difficult, making right? and cloud your actions. Yeah. I join you entirely in talking about if somebody broke my wife's nose in three places, yeah. I would not be responsible no. for my actions. No. I would completely lose it. Yeah. But of course, when you're in uniform yeah. and you're carrying a warrant card and you're an officer of the law, you have to abide by higher standards than do you think not police do. officers men and women nowadays think you can't you, they can't do right for doing wrong and i'm not listen i absolutely accept that that video was a horrific horrific view right but at the same time it underlies i mean overnight hundreds mass at a police station after the manchester airport stamp and arrest protesters chanting Allah oh, oh, back bar or whatever uh, uh, <laughs> We're back there again. There are, there are MPs being elected to this parliament just by standing up and, and slagging off Israel and, and saying what's going on in Gaza is disgrace. We all know the thoughts about that. There was that councillor in Leeds who shouted Alo Akbar and he got elected as well. That, that immediately began. Do we know if the gentleman that was attacked, was he a Muslim gentleman? We don't know. We don't know definitively. We don't yet. know definitively, so but we I'm assume not, from the protesters that that might mm, be the case, so immediately it may, then... It, it may right. well be the case, but, of course, all of this will eventually come out in the wash. But when you say, here we go again, there are apparently people going to gather outside the Mayor of Manchester, Andy Burnham's office. Oh, can I just tell you something about, you know, Andy Burnham, who I've met on several occasions, very vociferous, he and Sadiq Khan and people like that, about all the things... Not a bleeding word from Andy Burnham, nothing zilch. We've all tried, absolutely no response. I find that astonishing. Well, people apparently are going to gather outside his offices at six o'clock tonight. So you can guarantee what Greater Manchester Police are wanting, that is for matters not 
to escalate. You know, social cohesion, we hear that phrase yeah. everywhere we turn, everywhere we look. People talk about social cohesion, which I personally think, in many parts of this nation, is hanging by a thread. Do you think the protesters, um, and, and, and you're right, we can only guess at this, but let's say the gentleman was of Muslim origin, do you believe that this will become a, another race-divided debate? Do you think this is... I mean, I saw J George Galloway was, was pouring fuel on the flame. It was Rochdale, wasn't it? And we know all about the problems in Rochdale. I've been quite outspoken about Rochdale and said that, you know, the grooming gangs, in my humble opinion, and if you want to sack me over this, please feel free to do, I think those men got away with murder for five years, and I think if they hadn't been British Pakistanis, they'd have been banged up within about six months. If anybody wants to know anything about Rochdale, look up my great friend Maggie Oliver yeah. and the Maggie Oliver Foundation and you'll find out how that woman sacrificed her career and has dedicated her life to exposing the wrongdoings of Pakistani Muslim grooming gangs. Yeah. And she has done so much for victims, child victims of rape and worse. She is, she's an amazing woman. She's uh, this, is, this is really interesting. Straight away, Chris, can you explain to me why the obsession with the airport story? Why are the media, and you specifically, pretending that a serving soldier wasn't brutally stabbed in broad daylight yesterday? I haven't pretended he wasn't. I, I covered the story yesterday. I think it's utterly, utterly disgusting. I said yesterday on the show, instantly the image of Lee Rigby. I saw that on television. I, I'll never, ever be able to find that. That was just appalling. And you're right. Um, we're, we're, people are saying, what about that soldier who, in uniform, was stabbed and is fighting for his life? Lieutenant Colonel in uniform, in company with his wife when he was attacked, and she apparently tried to pull the attacker away. Can you imagine no. the horror that they must have gone through? And the people that witnessed it. Fortunately, some people were smart enough to get their phones out and get very good images, which led to a pretty swift arrest. But what is the motive behind that? We shall have to wait and see. Once again, I think this contributes to the fact that social cohesion is on a knife edge. Agreed. And I'm sorry, that's a dreadful expression I just used there. You know, no. but bearing in mind it was a stabbing, so forgive me. But it does hang by a thread yeah. in many, many regards. If we get, for example, if there were, for example, the killing of somebody from a, a minority, faith, race, gender group or whatever, would that be the spark to widespread disorder, like the shooting of Mark Duggan, for example, all those years ago, was a precursor to the riots in London and many, many other well, places. Well, I'll tell you something I'm going to say to you, because I always feel brave when you're here, and Ryan will smile when I tell him this. Um, the appalling uh, treatment of George Floyd, which resulted in Black Lives Matter and every single footballer still taking the knee, nobody reported that in the month after that, ten white police officers were stabbed or attacked or whatever in Chicago. So neither is right, in my humble opinion. But when you talk about social cohesion, you're absolutely right, because we have become a society that is split. There are different sides, and everybody seemingly has, if you, for want of a better phrase, uh, a motive or a belief. I, 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 I looked at that yesterday, initially like you, and thought, that's awful. I looked at the stabbing and thought, here we go again. When I see that soldier being stabbed... I want the police to go out in the streets and round these up and throw away the key. So then you look at that officer and you think, what if that bloke had thrown some some explosive or had come at somebody? I don't know. It's, it, I, you wouldn't want to be in the police, would you? You no. wouldn't want to be in the well, army. You wouldn't want to be in uniform, would you? Well, two weeks ago, I was on the front line with Bedfordshire Police for three days and I saw everything that you would want from a modern, contemporary British police service. And by that, I saw courage. I saw professionalism. I saw dedication. I saw humility and compassion. All the things you want to see. But it's far from perfect, of course, yeah, policing, of course. because of where it's got to. And it will never be perfect because it's full of people. And we all have our flaws in some way or another. But my deep concern about many parts of this country, for many different reasons, being a tinderbox, absolutely remain. And my huge concern is it's only going to take a little spark. Love to know what you think, my friends. 0344-499-1000. Uh, we're talking about that stabbing uh, of the police... Well, of, of the uh, the soldier yesterday. We're talking about that stabbing uh, situation at Manchester Airport. You can text 87222. Start your message with the word talk. More news as well. 
shoplifting at a record high as thieves operate without fear. Another story in the newspapers today. With absolute impunity. And any follower of crime and policing matters like me will have seen video after video of people with those large type laundry sort of bags going into various shops and simply helping themselves and walking out unchallenged. It is at epidemic proportions. We have 800 retail staff a day subject to assault or 800 abuse. 800 a day? A day oh subject to abuse or assault, which is leading so many retailers to have non-intervention policies, which actually are much of the root cause of the problem, because if you don't intervene and you don't challenge and you don't snatch the goods back and you don't detain these people, you are just creating the perfect environment for, for them to go out and carry out their stealing day after day But just after soft, day. mate, aren't we? And doesn't the softness result in the horrors that we saw yesterday? Of course it does. And now, if we had sufficient prison capacity and we started... Build some bloody prisons! And we got rid of these ludicrous three-month, six-month, nine-month sentences, and we sentenced people to appropriate lengthy terms of punishment during which they could, for example, learn to read and write, challenge their behaviour, get over their drugs habit, quit their alcohol, of course, because they're hopefully not going to get too much of that in prison, and maybe get a vocational skill. That is the way to rehabilitate people and then get them back into society where they will contribute and not sit on their backsides claiming benefits, smoking drugs and shoplifting. Couldn't put it any better myself. And then the other story today, which is even worse, is the number of young people suffering serious injuries from knife crime has risen almost half in a decade, with black children six times more likely to be murdered. You look at it, right, and you go, OK, uh, Kyle's off again. You know, he's ranting, he's 59. We've got kids. Hurt by knives, up 47% in a decade. We've got people who, who are making or trying to make a living running a corner shop or some sort of outlet being being ripped off, stolen from, abused and attacked, and the police do nothing. We've got men who are serving in the British Army, walking down the street with their wives being stabbed because they're wearing a uniform. We've got what happened last night at Manchester. It does lead many people, Pete, to go, maybe we need to be bloody stronger in this country. I'm a huge fan of robust policing, as you know, where and when appropriate. But for how long have you and I been talking about that tide of teenage blood that is running through the streets of our capital city and many other cities? Two 15-year-olds murdered in London this week alone. It is utterly scandalous. And so it goes on and on and on. And even when young people are arrested and charged and put into a, a young person's... Offenders Institute, in, yeah. ..like Feltham, yeah. which only in the last few days has been found to be the most violent prison in the land. What is going wrong? I really think it is quite simple, straightforward, and unpopular with many to say we need to get a grip. Completely. We don't yeah. need to become brutish... We don't need to become jackbooted, but we need a grip. You know, you know when we talk like this and people say, oh, you two are absolutely spot on, what, this was how I was brought up, right? There were rules and there were boundaries, and if you broke the boundaries, there were bleeding consequences. So I take that into later life, and I think to myself, whether it's knife crime, whether it's shoplifting, whether it's terrorism, whether it's just whatever it is, if you break the law, instead of being able to find some snivelly little lawyer or some loophole in the law that says that you're suffering from anxiety, you should be given an opportunity because you've never worked or something, you should be made to face the consequences. And whilst facing those consequences, as you quite rightly say, we as a society should be saying, how can we make this person better? And as for this complete tripe about... I mean, I, I haven't spoken to you about it since... I mean, let's release 40% of prisoners, right? I mean, were you here when I did the story about my father-in-law? He spent all his life waiting for a new car, 79, buys one, gets nicked. He was raging when I got home the other day and Starmer said, he, car crime's apparently a petty crime. You tried telling him his insurance has gone up fivefold. He's raging, man. And I get that completely. There is no low-level victim. 
I hate this terminology that gets applied to crimes by middle class middle managing senior police officers who the most danger they will face is getting a paper cut from their spreadsheet <laughs> when they print it out <laughs> and all they do is get promoted by filling boxes it is utterly appalling we also need to reform the criminal justice system in its entirety let's get rid of these pointless community punishments which people just laugh at and often yes, don't abide by yes. and all of that just pointless because people end up getting arrested time and time again for breaching the orders that are imposed upon them it's a waste of well, time well you'll love this grant hopwood to cut you off because we're going to do peter for justice minister says grant in bedford we all think you should run the police uh, robert taylor manchester airport red mist or not until the threat is neutralized cuffed and controlled the guy was still a threat rob from lincolnshire we'd agree with that rodders okay uh, manchester police have more battle bottle than the met keystone cops and g molden stop sensualizing this issue i've seen lots of violence in my time and it wasn't a hard kick or a serious stamp it was designed yes to subdue rather than injure final word to you peter there are a huge number of people that clearly are in support of the police action my question to greater manchester police is why haven't we got the body worn video of the officers who were assaulted had the nose broken and the previous incidents that's the way to win the communications battle could not agree more as ever brilliant to have you on peter blexley former met police detective talking about how the officers have been suspended after that fracas terminal two in manchester 24 hours ago how knife crime amongst kids is rising kids hurt by knives up 47% and how shoplifting is so prevalent. If you own a shop, people can just come in, nick everything because there's no police around and nobody gives a toss.